Well, joining us now is France 24's uh, Douglas Herbert, who's been monitoring uh, that opening day hearing, an opening day hearing that will be long remembered. Pandemonium. Uh, it's unprecedented, uh, extremely rare. Even the senators, Charles Grassley himself, those who've been there decades on this committee said they have never seen scenes like that at a nomination hearing, at a hearing for a Supreme Court nominee. And what's going on here? Well, look, uh, we know that this is for the highest court in the land. And this justice isn't just any other justice. He's replacing a swing vote on the court, Anthony Kennedy, who's retiring. Um, so it, it actually has the potential to move this court, already moving right, but even further to the right on some of the biggest social issues of the day, whether we're talking environment or abortion rights or gun rights or you name it, voting rights across the board, same-sex marriage, you go right down the list. There are fears on all of this issue as to what the sort of judicial, juridical thinking of this nominee is. What the Democrats' argument has been, and they are in the minority as they are in the Senate and in the House, obviously, um, is that this is basically a premature hearing, that there are, A, they've only seen the tip of the iceberg, a very tiny fraction of the total document, the paper trail, so to speak, of this nominee's career, namely many years that he spent under George W. Bush in the White House then as both a chief counsel in the White House and also as a staff secretary, both pretty significant legal positions offering advice on a lot of the issues of the day. You remember the big issues in the George W. Bush administration, uh, torture, Guantanamo, uh, so on and so forth. What the Democrats are saying is they're not just gratuitously trying to delay and obstruct the process. They're saying in order to do their constitutional job as senators, which is to vet nominees to the Supreme Court, they need to have a good understanding of what his background is. They say they don't have that right now. They say this is a premature hearing, and under the circumstances, they are working, basically, they are ill-equipped to do their jobs uh, properly. And that after the, the, the opening scenes that we heard, well, the hearing continuing, the yeah. Democrats opting to stay in the room. Stay in the room, but in their opening remarks, giving some very pointed comments. I will note that Senator uh, Patrick Leahy, Democratic uh, senator from uh, Vermont, basically called this, and I'm quoting, the most incomplete, the most partisan, the least transparent vetting for any nominee I have ever seen. Uh, we had his colleague, uh, Dick Durbin, also Democrat from Illinois, call and saying that there is a 35-month gaping hole in this nominee's record that the senators on this committee know nothing about, and they're not privy to any documents and no information. So they're working basically with their hands tied behind their back. And at one, and this was perhaps the most pointed moment of the entire uh, opening part of this meeting, when Dick Durbin, facing Brett Kavanaugh, in his opening remarks, saying to uh, the nominee, this is a president who has shown us uh, he, consistently that he's contemptuous of the rule of law. It's that president who has decided you are his man. So are people nervous about this? He asked uh, the nominee. Uh, they're concerned about this? Of course they are. Um, so he's trying to articulate at least what a lot of the minority senators on this committee are thinking. Now, you did have, in the Republican side, uh, one of the supporters of Brett Kavanaugh calling this uh, nomination hearing by mob rule, uh, so trying to basically uh, depict the Democrats as being obstructionist, trying to shut down a hearing, and trying to prevent the, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee from doing its business. But whatever you argue, this is unprecedented. These scenes are not seen very often in, in the Senate chamber. Douglas Herbert, many thanks for that. Uh,